So, Matthew McFadden, uh, we've got two things to talk to you about today. Um, the limited series quiz, which is on AMC, and then Succession, the second season of that on HBO. But let's start with quiz, which is this fascinating true story, right? I mean, did, how much did you know about what happened in quiz when they approached you to play Charles Ingram? Uh, I didn't... I didn't know very. I didn't know an awful lot about it. I remember the show very well um, because it was a sort of it was a real phenomenon at the time. It was a. Uh, it was on every single night, um, so everyone sat and watched it. It was, of course, it was before, you know, st streaming or watching on demand. So uh, it was something that everyone sort of watched, stayed in and watched, and they got something like nineteen odd million, ninety million viewers every night at its height uh uh but it was just such a brilliant it was just a fantastic story and um and an interesting part and i thought there were great actors involved and of course stephen frears so it was um yeah i yeah i bit their arm off when they sent me the script well what's so interesting is you know james graham started it was a play and it was That's sort right. of at, yeah. every night it asked the audience do you think charles ingram is guilty or not, and every night there's a different result. So I have to well, ask. They had, they had one in the. There was a. They had. Um, I think they had uh, keypads in the in the theatre, and they were. They had a. They were asked in the interval whether they as to their guilt or innocence, and then again at the end. Um, so, when you start, did you think he was one way, and by the time you finished filming, had you decided he was the other? Did you start? No, are we? I don't. The truth is, I don't know. And we never. Sean and I would come in every day and go, "Do what do you think? Do you think they did it? Do you think they didn't?" And eventually, we sort of stopped minding, really. <laughs> and uh, and I I think the interesting thing was their relationship and what they were going through and the you know the build up towards it and and you're sort of busy with serving James's script. Um, and playing the truth of that rather than playing a wash of innocence or guilt. So the, so the, tr the honest truth is I don't, I don't know. I still don't know. I still, um, but I certainly didn't play it one way or another. But then I think that's what, as a viewer, makes it so interesting because I think in the course of the three hours, my mind kept changing from one to the other. Oh, they actually did it. They didn't. She was guilty. He wasn't. I mean, and I think it's a testament to the writing, to the directing, to the acting that we, you have yeah. those feelings. So you're being asked to play this notorious man. Just take us into the research. I mean, I certainly know what I did as soon as I finished watching the show was go and look at the actual episode. Uh, right. Assuming... Well, that apparent that episode is not that's not it, they never aired the episode. It was never shown on TV. It was shown the ITV edit of that episode was shown and that's the one people watch. So very often people think they've seen it or they think they've remembered seeing it, but they it, it was never broadcast. So what they've seen is the um, is the ITV version <clears throat> of the episode. Uh, so I watched that, and uh, and the ITV episode is the one in which the coughs are the sound of the coughs are manipulated and brought up. So, but I watched that, and there's also an awful lot of stuff online with the, with Charles and Diana. They did some, you know, after the trial, they did some sort of reality TV stuff. They did something called Celebrity Wife Swap, and they went on a, another game show together. And there's some other sort of, there's some other documentaries about them. So I did a bit of that, but mostly it's the script. Mostly the research comes from just reading the script a lot. And, uh, and um, yeah. And if you've got a good script and you've got wonderful actors, then that's your, that's your roadmap. Mm -hmm. Well, and I have to think a lot of it, you're helped along by the the set, by by sitting on that set, the intense lights. I mean, what was it like the first time you sat in the hot, literally the hot seat, you know, with those lights coming on you, you've got Michael Sheen as Chris Tarrant across from you. <laughs> it's great. There was no, there, I've said this before, but it's true. There's no, it was, wasn't um, a feat of the imagination to, to do that whole sequence. It was just wonderful because it's all there for you, you know. And they had all the lighting and the music cues and, you know, the sort of heartbeat soundtrack. Ba -bum, ba -bum. Right. Um, so it was sort of terrifying. And the audience, you know, we had all these essays who were brilliant, who were there for, you know, days and days on end. Well, um, you know, Michael Sheen sort of, 
I know you were in Frost Nixon with him. You played a BBC controller. He plays uh, yep. Frost. He's made a career out of this. How eerie is it sitting across from him, those big teeth, that hair? I mean, is it... Uh, it must great. Be it's just, I mean, it's just thrilling because that, I, as an actor, I, I get, I'm sort of informed by the other actors, you know. I'm not sort of summoning up anything from inside of me. You're... I think when you when you work with wonderful actors like Michael, like Sean, you know, then um, uh, like Helen McCrory, like you know Mark Bonner, it, it's it's wonderful because you're you're sort of being fed by them. Um, and my, you know, after after a week sitting opposite Michael as Chris Tarrant, I sort of forgot what the real Chris Tarrant looked like. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Though I do wish that the real life major had a better fashion sense because the uh, the, sh the shirt you're in, I mean, that's it's a beautiful shirt. It's a nice, it's a nice rugby jersey with some nice sort of comfortable jeans. Okay. Well, that's black Oxfords. Well, you know, it's so interesting because I guess so much of what you've done is period drama, and this is period too. It's just twenty totally. years ago. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the scenes with Sean, uh, you know, your Charles and Diana, uh, I don't know if your the, their marriage is as troubled as the, the <laughs> no. um, those are just so wonderful because again, the, we see the scenes sometimes different versions of them and it's just, it's such, mm. it's so real and raw. So I was surprised to find out that the couple's still together. Uh, well, yeah, I think I, it, Sean and I found their relationship really to be really interesting and touching and sort of lovely, really. And, it, and um, certainly in the face of all the, you know, the treatment they, they endured from the press and the public before and during the trial, um, that they stuck together. And there's something very lovely about that. Uh, and I really enjoyed the scenes with her, you know, um especially the sort of you know the scenes when she's when she's diana's coaching charles before he goes into the um fastest fingers first seat and all that stuff and then afterwards when they're trying to trying to adjust to then to their lives being turned upside down um but yeah they're still together they're yeah they came they came they came to see us on set on the last day of our shooting they were very nice, lovely. And that, I think, was the only time you met him, right? In terms yeah. of, so you had, that's, I think, what is so uncanny is when, if anyone does watch the Martin Bashir documentary or that mm. episode, is to see how you captured the essence of the man. You're not sort of doing an impression of him or an impersonation, but you no. kind of have the, this character. Well, I think one of the things that I, is so appealing about this, and it's sort of the writing and Freer's direction as well, the little tiny comic moments. So it's mm -hmm. not, and, and just what's that like as an actor to be given those little moments? Because Charles certainly has them. It's lovely. It's bliss, all that stuff. And Stephen, <laughs> Stephen's, he's great. He's got an eye for it, you know. He's, um, but it's, uh, they're not, I mean, it, it never felt like, it's nice to do, have little sort of comic moments because life is comic and ridiculous and the situation is, Silly, you know, it's a game show and they're prepping for a game show and, you know, the, he's got a brother-in-law who's a, obsessed with it and all that sort of stuff was good fun. But I think by dipping a toe into that, you can, you can sort of come back to something quite moving or quite real, you know. I think it's, um, <clears throat> I think it works. And Stephen has a really, a really wonderful knack. I think the whole thing feels quite almost tongue-in-cheek at times um, and I think it works really well there's a sort of there's a sort of um, knockabout quality to it somehow I'm not being very articulate but I it, it, it felt a little bit I felt there was a there was also in the very English scandal which I thought was amazing yeah. bit of work, and that had a sort of it sort of barreled along um, well what it obviously resonated with uh viewers in the uk i mean it did sort of uh, quiz did who wants to be a millionaire numbers i mean the, the ratings were 
record breaking, especially when there's Quarantine so much noise. Helps, I think. <laughs> well, I'm going to disagree with you in that there were lots of lots of more choices now than there were 20 years ago. Yeah, that's true. The, yeah, yeah. So I think it, it, that it resonated and it built an audience too. I mean, that's another. Mm. I think it, as it, people were talking about it, it was sort of broader. Right, yeah. Um, so yeah. congratulations on that. Thank you. It was I the know, first time it was the first time we, well, not the first time, but I can't the first time in my memory that we all sat and teenagers. There are three teenagers with us in the house, and we all sat and watched it. It was great. I was thrilled. I was looking around, expecting them to sort of wander off halfway through, but they didn't. So I know that Charles Ingram, when he came on the set, told you how much he likes Succession. Mm. So now I, I've got to ask you about the teenagers. <laughs> okay. what, do they, what do they make of Succession? It's, they haven't. They haven't seen it. Uh, or have has the big one seen it? I don't think he has. I think it's a funny one if you're watching your well, my eldest, if you're watching your dad, your stepdad, or whatever, in something. It's not. Um, it's not as interesting as what you know. He's watching money heist now the other things so um, but I, the other two are probably a little too young i i i think so um but so i know charles ingram like succession but we all love succession and um oh, so <clears throat> you you know this is you playing uh, the outsider in a family and, and an american i mean i have to think getting the chance to play an American in an HBO series was very interesting to you. You carved out a career in a lot of period dramas. Um, take us back a couple of years to when they send you that script. For the uh, it was very, very exciting because I hadn't played an American on, on film. Um, I had on stage, but never on film. And that's quite a, that's quite a hurdle to get over somehow, sometimes. Um, and so I wanted to see if I could do that in the right thing and this and it was such a brilliant script and i i was a fan of jesse armstrong the um the writer the creator and uh so i just felt very lucky so i yeah it was just wonderful it's very liberating for a brit to play an american and certainly to play an american like tom wamsgans who's you know who's sort of yeah, a, a singular character in many ways. So well, it's been it's been really lovely. He really is, isn't he? Because you know he's our sort of way into the family at the beginning, the outsider. Yeah. Now, as it sort of has progressed two seasons, he's inside the family. And what I think is so fascinating about the character and your portrayal of him is, in one beat, he's the most sympathetic, and then yeah. in the next, he's the most off-putting. And <laughs> it's kind of challenging for you as an actor to strike just the right note in each scene uh it is challenging but it's but it's it's one it's liberate it's wonderful because you can you can flip-flop you know because you're right he's very you know there are moments he's terribly sympathetic he's sort of lovely and um you know and he's the he, he's the butt of everyone's jokes and you know he gets bullied and you know and then he but then he sort of bullies greg and in kind um and he's in a strange relationship with Siobhan Logan Roy's daughter you know I think that's that's very hard and but uh, for as an actor when you get those great changes of mood and character it's it's just great fun it's great fun I mean I still what resonates with me is that one of the last scenes when he sort of says to Siobhan I don't about the level of sadness, uh, the sadness that when I'm with you or the sadness that I have without you. And he doesn't really know which would be worse. No. And that heartbreaking. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful now, bit of writing. Yeah. And when the, when the writing's that good, it sort of looks after you as an actor. You know, you, it's great. It's great. You don't, I, it's a real gift. You don't have to. You don't have to do very much. You just have to sort of say the words and hope for the best. I thought what what was so interesting though is it's not like you didn't have every script before the season starts. So you no. you yeah. don't know where. Just like Tom doesn't know where he's going to end up. Mm -hmm. um, how uh, w would you prefer to know 
Like when you did, you know, Pride and Prejudice, you know what's going to yeah. happen to Mr. Darcy, you know, those sorts of things. When you do Howard's yeah. End, you know the end of your character before you start filming. I it, suits me, it suits me quite well not knowing. I, I quite like it because Tom doesn't know and I can't, you know, you can't play anything that's to come. And so if I think if there was something really critical that, that we had to get across for the story, I think Jesse and the writers would let, let us know. But I think um, I'm much happier sort of going episode by episode um, and sort of being nimble with it and be, being fresh um, as it would be for Tom. It's kind of great. And, uh, and then you can't, you don't prepare so much, you know, you're just sort of on the fly. It's really, it's lovely. So then you get a script and it talks about Tom pelting Craig with water bottles. I mean, how much, uh, how much rehearsal was your co-star willing to do on, in that scene? <laughs> the props department made us these bottles. We had these empty bottles. <clears throat> and of course, I couldn't throw the empty bottles because they just fly around. You know, they had to have a bit of heft. So they put a bit of, they put this sort of glue or this gunk in the bottom, this clear stuff, which gave it a bit of weight. And also, and they, and they couldn't be full of water because I would hurt Nick, you know. Um, I think I did get a couple at his head, but they weren't very heavy, but sort of heavy enough so I could throw them. Yeah, that was good. That was a really lovely day at work. That was a good day. Um, you know, the, the scenes with Siobhan and Tom are among uh, the ones that you really lean in to watch because you're both so good. And I think it's so interesting. I don't think most people would realize that you're English unless they've been seeing Quiz or Ripper Street or something. And I had no idea that uh, Sarah Snook was Australian. I mean, she, really, she was a newcomer Great. to me. So yeah. um, just sort of a basic question. Do you keep in the American accents offset or do you revert? How do you keep? I don't. I just revert back to my own voice. Um, partly because I'm just sort of lazy. Um, Sarah does a bit of both, but because Sarah's Australian, it doesn't sound, I, don't, I never notice it. Um, but yeah, I don't. I don't, but but it's but it's great because I'm sort of around American actors and the crew, and so it's sort of just I can hear it in my ear. You know, there's the the music of the accent is in my head, I guess. So it doesn't feel. Um, sometimes I think I ought to sort of stay in American, but I I can't. And part partly that's my own actor's sensibility. You're on or you're off. You know, it's like putting on a putting on a it's like putting on a mask and taking off the mask. I'm not but living. I think, in, I think in a way, though, that the writing, it's not all Jesse Armstrong, but I, it's got a British sensibility about it in so many, so many ways. So you, Brian Cox, Sarah from Australia, th there's something that lends itself to your styles of acting and, and yourselves. I think you, you kind of inform the dialogue by not being American, if that makes any sense. Maybe. Yeah, I do think I'm not. Yeah, perhaps. But I, do, I, I think... I think there's certainly, there's a sort of, um, I think maybe due to, due to the, the, uh, the majority of the writers being Brits, maybe there's a sort of um, a nice remove from, maybe there's a sort of a caustic element to the script, which might not be as, uh, as might not, it might not be as caustic if it were all Americans, you know, they're able to sort of, look take a step back and see it with a clearer eye maybe or the less precious much in the same way as as kenny lonigan doing the adaptation of howard's end it was a sort of an american looking at a very british thing maybe that's maybe that's a maybe that's a healthy way of doing it i don't know i well i think um the fact that you don't get these scripts in advance when you get those scripts that have the, the scenes at the dinner tables thanksgiving or uh, you know, the boardrooms, those, the logistics of the shooting of those, because it seems like it's oftentimes one long take. Um, mm, I know in, in quiz, you're in the hot seat and you know the camera's on you, um, you know, it's intently focused on you. What's it like filming those scenes where you might not have much dialogue, but 
there's so oftentimes there's a reaction shot from you or from one of the other characters. Mm -hmm. the, the level of intensity must be uh, intense. <laughs> it is, but it's, but it's energizing because, because you're on all the time. Um, often when you're filming around a table, it's um, excruciatingly boring because the camera will go around and do a single on each one, you know, and you work here around the table. And, uh, and so for a lot of the time, you're just sort of sitting there. But the succession scenes are wonderful because they have three or four cameras and they're all um, on people's shoulders and they're moving around and they're picking up bits and the operators are so skilled and know the scene so well, actually, that they can just sort of pick up. So you feel like you're in a play. You feel like you're being watched all the time. It's really wonderful. And so it's, um, it's energizing for that reason. Well, listen, I mean, you've given us, uh, at, at this time, it's so nice to have two things. We can go back and rewatch season two of Succession, because I think it's going to be a while before we get season three. Um, mm -hmm. And then separately a, and apart from that is Quiz, and uh, mm -hmm. just a really w wonderful contrast in shows to, to oh, your good. strength. So thank you, listen, for taking the time to talk to us. And uh, Oh, you're so welcome. Get back to those teenagers and... Um, it will. One just snuck in here. <laughs> yeah. She was after. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks again, Matthew. Bye -bye. You're very welcome. Take care.